In 1902, man went to the moon. And this is what it looked like. A Trip to the Moon was the world's first science fantasy film. Audiences loved it because they'd never seen anything like it before. And for its time, it was the most exciting adventure ever imagined. But that was 80 years ago. Right now, Columbia Pictures is creating a whole new world. The Planet Crawl. During the next half hour, we will journey through Krellian landscapes to encounter a new civilization and meet its inhabitants. The royalty. The renegades. The wise men. Brave men. The conjurers. Seers. The slayers. The changelings. Their master, the beast. And a new hero on a perilous quest in search of the black fortress and the woman he loves. Making a movie like Krull is an enormous job. Ten sound stages at the Pinewood Studios in England are being used all at once including the 007 stage where all the James Bond films were made. The largest stage in the world. Action! Lasers! One of the biggest problems in making a fantasy adventure is that the special effects demand so much attention Cut. that the characters and their stories have sometimes been neglected. When in fact, what people really care about <laughs> are people. The Cyclops coming in looked very good. I mean, if if anything pleases me about this film, I think it is that the, the characters are people, that they, they act like people. We are on another planet. Uh, things are going to look different from the way they do on Earth but uh, the emotions and the motivations and the goals of the people who live on Krull are not different from the people that you and I know. Hang on there, let's see how that is. Uh, so often when you go and see an effect film, no one really notices who the people are. With this film, we want to notice who the people are and we want to feel that people can come and see something really beautiful. Yeah, I, I, like, the, I like the gallows tree. Film is by far the most collaborative medium of the arts requiring a vast number of talents to be channeled into one final product. He's got to be further into the rock. Right, now speed it up a bit. Quite simply, there are those who work in front of the camera... Uh, Lizette, would you come aboard, please, darling? ...and those who work in back of the camera. And the first time they assemble... I haven't met you, have I? ...they find out who's who. The point of this rehearsal always is for people to get to know each other, not only the other actors you're working with, but uh, have a chance to meet people like makeup, hair, wardrobe, so that you all do at least feel part of the same film. There's Stephen Grimes, who is in charge of designing the picture and has done all the sets. And Derek Meddings, who's doing all the special effects. Peter Shusitsky is the director of photography. This is Derek Cracknell, who is uh, my assistant, and Vic Armstrong, who make you all healthy. Um, I think that Peter was very good with actors, and I knew I'd learn a lot working with him. And I liked what he said we'd be doing, too. You know, he wanted to make uh, this kind of fantasy swashbuckling adventure. The read-through is an interesting phenomenon. We all dive into the deep end and uh, hopefully give a respectable read-through of the play. This brings us all together, and we're now committed. Krull by Stanford Sherman, fade in, scene one. My father says good fighters make bad husbands. You too are a fighter. Perhaps we should both be worried. Your father is wrong. Yes. Uh, the Great Hall and Corridor, two corridors stretch away from us in the shape of a V. Lissa and Erig appear at the far end of the lower corridor, and as they progress along the corridor, the torches of two lines of men-at-arms sequentially ignite. 
In the other corridor, Colwyn and Turold moved towards the men-at-arms, torches having ignited as they passed. From this day, my kingdom is no more. Nor am I. A single kingdom under our children. Agreed. It's very actually unusual to have, have a read-through for films, but Peter likes it. He wanted us to see it as a whole and not just the sections of the parts we were doing. Great Hall, Lissa is at the font. I take fire from water. And action. I take fire from water. I give it only to the man whom I choose as my husband. Don't rush it, Lizette. Hold it there. Take the fire from my hand. The main body of the story is a journey of great danger. It's about good triumphing over evil and bravery over cowardice and um, some pretty extraordinary things happen. Ergo joins up by mistake. This might have been quicksand. I might have been sent to my death while you stood there gawping. Oh. He's constantly making mistakes throughout the film. Where is this place? Forest near the granite mountains. Blast! A thousand miles off course. He's a conjurer, you know, he, he can change himself into many different things, but uh, he's not always very accurate. I am Ergo the Magnificent. Short of stature. Tall in power. Narrow of purpose. And wide of vision. And I do not travel with peasants and beggars. Goodbye. He ends up staying with us basically out of fear because he's afraid to be alone. And uh, he kind of grows on you. And we grow on him. I've just remembered! I've urgent business in this direction! And he becomes a good member of our band. Exterior rocky terrain, Torquil and his band. Kagan, Oswin, Run, Bardolf, Menno, Darrow, and Swain. Robbers. Man. We don't know yet whether they're robbers. Places that ugly could only belong to robbers. Don't worry, I'll turn them all into pigs. A band of men are run by Torquil. Well, what have we here? A fighter! And we'd, uh, we'd all just escaped from prison when we're discovered. Thieves, bandits, fighters and brawlers. Those are the kind of men I need. We really don't want to go on this journey because all we're interested in is money. But the prophet's freedom. And fame. Freedom we have. And fame is an empty purse. Fame is what you leave to your sons. How did you know I had sons? Which is evident. If the slayers conquer Kral, your sons will be enslaved forever. Once their leader, Torquil, decides, they basically follow him. He's the key. Well, you heard him. We are now an army. <laughs> well, we've got it down to fine art. Yeah. We've concentrated not on recreating the past or even trying to dream up what people may be wearing in hundreds of years' time, but in designing the picture, Stephen Grimes has tried to create a feeling of storybook, a feeling of fantasy, a feeling of escape. The master architect on any film is the production designer. This is the first time I've ever had to really invent a whole world, and inventing a, a new world is difficult. The thing we decided on was that whatever planet it was, it was something that was attractive and that people would accept. Stephen and I have departed from what is expected of a fortress so that one can use one's imagination and really have people going through fantastic looking places. 
So it becomes more of a fantasy, more of an adventure that audiences will want to share. The world is a very strange one, the world of Krull. It's like a beautiful fairy story. This is an enormous size, and it really, the only way to, to sort of give you any ideas, I suppose a man is around about that size. So you can see it's quite a large cocoon. Yunia has tried to avoid having to come near this place because nobody who enters this enormous spider's web is ever supposed to return alive, and he is forced to climb along the, the webbing of the web out to the cocoon. Unbeknownst to him at this stage, he has other things to contend with. I can't recall having worked with so many special effects as I have in this film. It's very difficult when you have to see something highly dramatic, when it isn't really happening at all. I seek the widow! Francesca Annis plays the widow of the web. She is the one who is able to foretell the future and is able to tell Yanir where it is the Black Fortress is going to rise. It is the ultimate fantasy, of course, a sort of you confront your past, and um, she goes through this amazing transformation of going back to how she was when they were first met, when she was very, very young. How could I have left you? Since Krull is a foreign planet, Slayers! Slayers! From the many of the characters have powers unlike those of mortal men. Um, David here, um, he was supposed to change into a tiger because he's got all his magic with him. He changes into a tiger to frighten the slayers away. The tiger was supposed to be hurt and I had to have the, um, the tiger's head on my lap and so that was... That was a big experience. I won't leave you, Ugo. He was a really lovely animal. He was so... Um, when I saw him, he's so soft. He was like a just... Well, what he is, a big pussycat. Normally, when one's asked to play a part of a policeman or a military man, you've got recognised models to go on, and the actor draws on those experiences of people he's met to create the sort of character he's asked to create. Action burn. There aren't too many cyclopses about that you can uh, observe and uh, copy. Nevertheless, it's very exciting to be asked to do it. This is one of the Slayers. They're a, a race of creatures which are sent out by the beast to do his evil doings. And there were a number of designs. And this is our final creation. While Mick Maley and his staff took months to bring their creations to life, another special effects team headed by Derek Meddings spent a few afternoons figuring out how to destroy them. Action! Cohen! To be an actor in a fantasy film may entail hours of patient sitting. or quite the reverse. <laughs> to play the part of Colwyn, Ken Marshall's preparation included riding, fencing, and boxing. Throw it. Bring it back. All under the supervision of stunt coordinator Vic Armstrong. Bring it back. Together they worked out for weeks before filming began. Colwyn moves with grace, with ease. There's a certain cat-like quality to him. Their goal was not only to enable Ken to perform his own stunts, but to make him look smooth and easy. He does have to take risks to a certain extent. Yeah, touch wood. <laughs> the floor of the fortress opens up, and some of us slide down inside the corridor to another area, and in trying to rescue them, I'm supposed to climb down this rope, and then these two sides start to come together. Go! 
I supposed to climb out and just barely get out in time before they slam together? We checked it all out ahead of time with the stuntman doing it because I could only climb up the rope so many times, we don't know how many takes we have to do. And his timing was a little different than mine evidently because he caught me and just started crushing me. <laughs> so it's a, a very perilous fortress in, in real life as well. For Crow, actors aren't the only ones in training. 16 Clydesdales, the largest horses in the world, took months to train because they had never been ridden before. Nobody's put a saddle on a Clydesdale for about 500 years, you see, because originally Clydesdales were the Scottish um, fighting horses. And they bred them for strength and speed because they were the only things that could take the weight of the armor, you know, in medieval times. So nobody would bother riding them for that long. I was the first person to ride the Clydesdales from, from the cask. That they're wonderful because they haven't learned any bad habits and they're so sweet. And even in the snow when it was so slippery, they were lovely to ride. That's it. Pull him round. That's it. Back round the other way. <laughs> By spring, the horses seem to be ready. It's surprising how quickly they get into habits. We used to put them on the treadmill and they'd stand there as quiet as anything all day long until somebody said stand by and then they'd start galloping. And as soon as somebody shouted cut, they'd stop. They're absolutely amazing. Getting the actors used to riding these huge animals was another story. They picked it up pretty quickly. We picked it up, it took us a bit longer. <laughs> you take all the boys and go down and round up those, those three or four and just drive them up this way for me. I really am a coward, as where horses are concerned. Absolute terror. You're very high up. Every time I sit on a horse, I can, I can feel myself falling off, even if I'm not. Some of the more difficult stunts are handled by professionals who double for the actors. You're all right. Beats water skiing, doesn't it? Whoa. And in spite of the risks they take, they rarely get any of the credit. I spent eight months preparation in the gym for this. A lot of hard work jogging. I've got my jogging shoes on now and I jogged. I worked with the weights, did everything. But I think it's paid off. I'm very pleased with it. We're companions, we're buddies, aren't we? See, pardon? Oh, I see. He says, does he get paid for this, for this extra filming? Because he's on a daily rate and he's very expensive. In fact, he's more expensive than I am, aren't you, eh? He is. <laughs> <laughs> And what you're trying to do between the whole lot of you is get them in the position I indicated just now with a circle of you all around them. Don't drive them right down into the corner because otherwise you're going to have to do all your stunts in the mud. So you see where, where Ivan is now. In the film, the uh, time arrives when the only means that Colwyn and his people have of getting to the Black Fortress where Lyssa is being held captive is on fire mares. Which are wild horses that go do about 200 miles an hour. And they just come roaring around a corner, being chased by two of the robbers, with the idea that they drive them into a box canyon. And we come round behind them, corral them, and start trying to put ropes on them and get on their backs. And they actually break the fire mares in and put the saddles on and then set off to the castle. All right, let's try it. Roll camera! It is it's breathtaking the way these animals are performing in this film. Fantasy films have been popular since the cinema was invented. 
They've captivated audiences with exotic creatures and places. But most of all, with the lively and lighthearted escapism they provide. And yet, this kind of film is perhaps the most complex, meticulous, and physically demanding to do. Making a movie look fun and easy has always been the hardest part of all. But so long as moviegoers create the demand, Follow him. Go! filmmakers will continue to be put to the test of inventing new worlds. Open your eyes. And filling the screen with their imagination.